Uh, good afternoon and uh, greetings from Bogota, Colombia. I'm the agricultural counselor uh, representing the U.S. Department of Agriculture um, here in Colombia. Uh, we also have uh, a, a coverage of Venezuela. I'm very pleased to be here today. Thank you, Veronica, and to your team, uh, Mete, for, for letting me participate today. Um, I'm in the, um, the U.S. Embassy, of course, and my job is really to promote uh, uh, the, the best of U.S. agriculture and U.S. food. Um, and so thus, it's a privilege for me uh, to have served now for one year here in Bogota. Um, I arrived uh, August of last year. Um, and uh, Colombia, just focusing on Colombia, um, it's, it's the leading destination for the U.S. industry, the U.S. Uh, agricultural sector for food and agricultural products in South America, in fact, south of Mexico. Uh, it is the largest market, uh, almost $3 billion a year, um, and a real, real a tremendous success story. And so I'm very pleased and proud to be in the, in the leading destination for U.S. agricultural products in South America. And the wonderful thing is that we have a complementary trade relationship uh, with Colombia. Um, the products that they export equal, uh, roughly equal what we, uh, what we import. Um, and so it's a nice balanced trading relationship. Uh, agriculture is extremely important in Colombia as, as a sector. And, uh, and so what we do really matters here. And we have tremendous complementarity uh, in terms of uh, what they can produce and export and likewise uh, for the United States. Um, the, base, the basis for um, our expanding trade in Colombia uh, is, is really uh, the U.S.-Colombia Trade Promotion Agreement, or what we call an FTA, a free trade agreement, uh, that began in 2012 where most of our uh, products, including processed products, are, are, are duty-free. And there's some, some exceptions, uh, such as rice, poultry, and corn. But by and large, products come in, uh, come in duty-free. Um, the amazing thing about Colombia is it's the only country in the world that shares, uh, has shores on both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. No one else can, uh, can claim that. I guess Mexico, you may say, does that, but that technically that's the Gulf of Mexico, right? Um, so uh, we have that advantage here in Colombia, access to the port of New Orleans and uh, Pacific ports, um, and, and four major ports here uh, that, that, that service uh, trade. Um, Colombia also um, uh, has a, uh, a unique advantage in that um, compared to another country I worked in, Peru, uh, which has one city of 10 million people, Colombia has uh, four major cities of a million people or over. Here in Bogota, where I live, it's eight million people. Um, and so it's a very uh, spread out um, urban, urban country, unique in that way. Um, and so you've got a lot of these um, major, major cities with their uniqueness and market uh, uh, uniqueness that, that can um, uh, lead to interesting marketing campaigns and opportunities. So it's a very decentralized country. Um, and so don't forget, um, opportunities are not, not just in Bogota, but in some of the other major cities such as Medellin, Cali, uh, Barranquilla. And of course, everyone knows Cartagena, right? Um, that's the, the city that certainly tourists may, may begin in. Um, looking at the market, um, I'm going to get to COVID-19. Um, I'm looking at the clock. I, I think I have 10 minutes. Um, so I will we'll try to keep to that. Um, Colombia has a uh, has a growing middle class. Um, uh, keep in mind, it's a it's a country of 50 million people, uh, which is which is huge, um, real on a on a relative scale. Um, third largest populated country in South America, um, and so um, uh, it's it's a sizable market, and so it's got the middle class that you see here in Bogota. Um, and the surroundings are indistinguishable from an American city, frankly. Um, when I look out, it could be, it could be Upper West Side of Manhattan. Um, uh, so it's a very modern city and uh, very sophisticated consumers. Their favorite place in the world is Disney World. Um, I've gone there myself from Bogota, and I can assure you there are a lot of Colombians there. Um, and Colombians also uh, find their, their homes in, uh, in, in Toronto and other major cities. Um, so they're very sophisticated. Um, very akin to America. They love to send their kids to American schools. They can't wait for visas to be issued again to go back uh, so the kids can return to American colleges. So this growing middle class means uh, rising animal protein consumption. 
um, and, and, and products that, that, that we, the United States, are extremely competitive in. Um, and so for that reason, uh, lots of disposable income, um, demand for processed foods, and, and, and dining out habits, uh, top-notch restaurants. And so uh, it's certainly a very sophisticated market um, and uh, opportunities uh, at all levels of um, uh, all, all sectors of, of, a, of, a, um, of a consumer's options. Um, entering uh, stage right, COVID-19, what has happened? And I'm looking at the title. Today and tomorrow, you know, what I think of is tomorrow, tomorrow meaning post-COVID. Um, that's what that title means to me. Um, I don't, I don't think some things are going to ever change um, in terms of virtual purchasing. I'm going to get to that, what that means for, uh, for the food, for uh, uh, con uh, consumers' uh, purchasing habits. But the first thing that happened, um, and I can tell you from experience because I'm living it, is we're almost in six months of a mandatory quarantine, five and a half months, but call it six months, that started in mid-March. Uh, the, the economy uh, consumption tanked uh, for a brief moment. In fact, my job in the embassy was assuring people we were going to have sufficient food security to survive here. Well, Colombia proved um, they're very adept at moving commodities and food, and it helps when you got four major ports. Um, and so there was actually very a very limited impact on, on food availability, some short uh, shortages, but overall products came in, bulk commodities, food processed commodities came into the ports. Uh, some delays due to truckers not being able to move products because of fears of COVID and restaurants not being open a long route. But overall, things have moved along well. What's that, what uh, COVID-19 has spawned is a rapid adoption of technology um, and, and apps in a country where RAPI is the equivalent of, I guess, um, a, f a food delivery, pizza delivery service in the U.S., though I realize it's more sophisticated now. But Rappi uh, service can deliver everything and anything. Uh, and so that, that service is available in other apps where you can uh, have food delivered. Uh, Uber Eats, of course, is big here. So what's, what's happened is tremendous e-commerce initiatives. Um, and that's a good thing because it means that though the you, you suppliers that would like to come into the market here can target consumers directly. It's not just selling to the wholesalers, to hotel, restaurant, uh, industrial, or to the, uh, the, uh, the importers. Um, you can target and, and advertise directly to consumers. So a tremendous opportunity um, as, as essentially restaurants uh, have been shut down completely for, for five and a half months. And I see I've got about two minutes. I'll try to wrap up here. And so the, uh, the retail sector that's been dominated primarily by mom and pop stores um, do not have access to their digital platforms. Uh, and those in the food industry that have, have really uh, developed a, a booming business. So those restaurants that have remained open basically are delivering full time. Um, and that's when you come to a restaurant opening to a door, there's a barrier and, and it says, please order by, by, by Rappi or, or, or remotely. So um, that said, advantages, U.S. agricultural products here through this virtual platform, uh, have a, a tremendous uh, reputation for high quality, availability, and affordable prices. Uh, Colombians, as I said, love American products. Um, when they go to the U.S. to visit their kids in school or, or to the theme parks or to, the, or to our uh, and their major cities and, and the national parks, they want to come back and find some of the products that they like. Remember, it's only about a three to four hour flight to Miami. So um, it's very close uh, and you can, you can fly up and come back in one day if you want it. Um, young uh, women uh, are working. Um, half the ministers in this country are women. Um, and so they're uh, women and, and the youth, the kids that are at home are stimulating new food consumption trends. So exciting opportunities there for processed food products. Demand for healthy products is, is, is expanding and booming. There are some obesity trends here. And so they're, uh, they and the U.S. government are trying to promote more healthy living. So that, uh, just in terms of challenges, um, the depreciation of the Colombian peso could affect our, our competitiveness, though I would note, uh, through the six, uh, first six months of June, U.S. exports, food, agriculture products are up 6%. Unbelievable. In, in, the, in, the, in the time of COVID, the U.S. market is growing in Colombia, uh, despite COVID-19. 
Um, yes, some of the consumer ready products are down a bit, but uh, I'm very confident that's gonna come back uh, in a major way. Um, some other mis misperceptions I think about unhealthy foods, snack foods, something we face in many markets, um, perceptions of comida chatara, junk food, et cetera. Um, but I think uh, you know there are plenty of opportunities. Uh, and so uh, we just have to continue marketing uh, some of the healthier alternatives, a better image uh, that we are trying to do here through our online Sabor USA campaign uh, directly to consumers. Um, consumers um, here, uh, again, challenges prefer local products. That's probably going to increase with COVID-19, fruits, vegetables, uh, meat products, et cetera. And then the last challenge is some of the, the cold chain uh, challenges if you're intending to provide uh, frozen poultry products, for example. Um, there is a, a challenge of cold chain uh, at the ports that, uh, that, that they're, they're working to, uh, to overcome. So um, I will, uh, I'm at about 11 minutes. Uh, I'll stop there and look forward to uh, fielding any questions. And please come to Columbia. It's a tremendous market and we'd love to see you down here. Thank you.